Well, thank you very much for joining me. I have some assistance uh, today in doing this presentation, and that includes uh, Dana Fritsch, who is our administrative manager, um, who has a brand new addition to her family named Lily. So if she's not on mute, you might hear Lily. And yeah, I also have Katie Gill, and Katie Gill is our ownership services uh, leader. And she's the one that um, our shareholders are most in contact with uh, when they ask questions about uh, their stock ownership in the company. We also have um, ambassadors that serve our uh, owners um, that are their direct link to the winery. And we also have a wine club manager who is often very active with our owners. Here you can see in this first slide our, um, our home property. Uh, where I started uh, back in, in 1982. Uh, I planted the vineyard uh, beginning in 1983. Uh, so, and I've lived on the property during that entire 40 years. Um, this uh, uh, vineyard you see in front of you is the original planting that I, I made and, and I had got a lot of help. Susan Sokol Blosser came down and helped me lay out the vine rows in 1983. And uh, Dan Duche and his brother from Freedom Hill Vineyard helped me plant the vines that I got from Susan Sokol Blosser and also from the Castiles at Bethel Heights. So it, it, this industry is built on a lot of collaboration and I'm very lucky to have had their help. Uh, just here in the, uh, in the estate tasting room for lunch today was Don and, and uh, Carolyn Byard of Hidden Springs uh, Winery, uh, who were some of the very early pioneers along with Jim Palmquest of Silver Falls Winery. Uh, in the state taster room for lunch today. So it's a great collaborative industry. Many of our owners in, really enjoy that collaboration, but that's really the strength of the Oregon wine industry is we, we help each other, we've learned from each other, and now we're adding more and more wine enthusiasts as owners of uh, Willamette Valley Vineyards through this preferred stock ownership. Now, um, as you know, um, we have built the capital base of our organization through uh, stock ownership. And, um, and that's, you know, comes from, you know, these remarkable wine enthusiasts. Here you see some wine enthusiasts as owners enjoying their, their time in the, uh, in the cellar. That's really what really distinguishes us as a very unique winery in that uh, we have the strength of many, many wine enthusiasts who own stock in Willamette Valley Vineyards and have provided the capital for us to grow. You know, they, there's gonna there's a Q and A at the bottom of your screen, and so if you have questions that uh, that Katie can answer while I'm doing this presentation, or you have questions for me that she would rather have me answer at the end of this presentation, she'll tell me those questions, and I'll endeavor to to answer them um, as we go through uh, as we as we finish out this presentation. Now, um, some of you may have some questions about just the preferred stock and, and how it works. This preferred stock is listed on the NASDAQ. Um, so it's a unique uh, preferred stock ownership in that it's freely tradable. Um, that's one of the advantages that uh, people see in, in this type of ownership. The, what we're, the Securities and Exchange Commission has allowed us to do, which is the first ever, they've allowed us to qualify people seeking to make investment uh, in our preferred stock offering by, dis by learning about what their interest is as a wine enthusiast. Because what we really want to do is take in wine uh, subscribers for stock or wine enthusiasts into the company who will give strength to their own business through their own interest in wine, their own consumption in their wine, their own support for the wine club, their, um, their interest in, in telling the Oregon wine story and being a part of um, really, you know, a, a movement about showing the world about how we grow our grapes and why they taste so good. Um, so this is just, uh, this is a, I think people uh, are owners in our company, certainly because they're making a, a wise investment, but they're also owners in our company because they know they can actually move the needle. They can actually, through their own actions, improve the prospects of their investment, of their winery, and they also really enjoy being a part of the whole process. For example, our owners get 25% off of all the wine they buy, uh, down to bottle one. 
um, our owners uh, have special privileges. Like once a quarter, they can bring uh, they can bring a group of eight to the winery, including themselves, and for free receive um, a tour and tasting, which has a value of thirty dollars a person. So that's like two hundred and forty dollars a year just in that value alone, or, or just in that quarter. I'm sorry, alone. They, of course, they get their tastings for free, whereas the general public is charged. Um, but the other thing that they, they can do, and we encourage them to do, is to take their dividend and apply it to a wine credit. And that wine credit has a value of 15% more in value. And so if the dividend is $100, that means it's $115 worth of purchasing power using all your discounts uh, to buy wine uh, or other services from the winery. Of course, we have restaurants, and so it's not just wine. Um, we also have apparel and other items but also food services um, in our locations. So there's a variety of benefits you receive that are really quite of unique in terms of a NASDAQ listed company. Now here is uh, just one of the basic things about what we do and how we do it, that we approach our farming and our winemaking through stewardship, but we also approach our service to the community the same way through stewardship. And so you find us very actively involved in supporting community, community actions. But here you can see us using orphaned juvenile barn owls to naturally deal with the gophers and the voles that are in our vineyards. Uh, we get them from the Raptor Center in Eugene. Uh, I think we've had now 68 or 69 juvenile uh, barn owls um, that we've rehabilitated and put out into the vineyards with their own little homes. Um, here you can also read about why it's so important to us. We use natural cork as an enclosure to the wine because it, it helps uh, protect the cork trees in the Mediterranean uh, where every nine years their bark is peeled to make cork. And for several hundred years, they're taking carbon out of the atmosphere and pumping oxygen into the atmosphere. They're second only to the Amazon in their importance to the world's biosphere. Very important for us to use natural cork. Besides, it's the best enclosure. And then you can see other things that we do in promoting uh, you know, sustainable behavior. Now, this is a map of Oregon. There's Washington, California. You can see some of the AVAs on this map and you can see where we started there at the Estate Vineyard in 1983. And now I'm gonna show you what happened after we grew for a number of years. So over the years, I uh, uh, formed a partnership with Bill Fuller of Tualatin Estate Vineyards. Bill Fuller was one of the very first pioneers from California. Uh, he was actually the first practicing winemaker to come to Oregon from California, from the Louis Martini cellar. And he established the Tualatin Estate Vineyard. We merged our businesses together. Um, we also uh, have uh, done a long-term lease with the O'Briens at Elton Vineyard. Um, and I'll tell you more about that. We've acquired land next to them called Ingram. And, and then, of course, we have the Brno Estate Vineyard in the Dundee Hills, where our sparkling winery is located. A Loesa Vineyard that's named after our vineyard manager, who actually came to work for Bill Fuller when he was 16 or 17 years old and is still leading our vineyard operations, all of them, Efren Loesa. We named that vineyard after him. And then what happened was we thought, OK, Let's let's take let's sell preferred stock to wine enthusiasts and let's really grow. And so here's what's happened ever since 2015. This is what's happened. We now have about 24,000 or more uh, preferred stockholders and they provided the capital base for us to increase our plantings of which I'm going to show you some of them as well as to plant the uh, vines over in the Walla Walla AVA. We have several vineyards there, two vineyards, three, well, two vineyards planted and another vineyard uh, area land to plant. And you can see that in the uh, in this image. Plus, we have uh, tasting room restaurants located in uh, Lake Oswego um, and um, Vancouver. We're building one that we open in early November in Happy Valley and one in Bend. That's coming next year, in the mid-year. So here we have the uh, just a little bit about um, about about us about Willamette Valley Vineyards. We produce 
we're the leading producer of Willamette Valley Appellated Pinot Noir uh, anywhere. And we're the leading seller of that wine. And, and this tells you a little bit on this, on the other part of the slide, you can see that Oregon produces about 1% of the US produced wine in America, about 1% in the United States. But as Oregon winemakers in the Wine Spectator magazine, uh, over 20%, you can see 23% of the wines receiving a 90 point score or higher in the Wine Spectator is an Oregon wine. So Oregon quality is very important. And you can see some stats there that tell you about how well we, we sell in the marketplace nationally. We lead the nation, we lead the, the state uh, in our sales of Pinot Noir in our price point and above. This is a picture of some of our shareholders that came out to help us pick Pinot Noir for sparkling wine. So if you'd like to do that, we'd sure love to have you. This is just a slide that shows you uh, some of the wines we make and some of the scores we've received. So you can see that um, the major reviewers um, hold our wines in high regard. This is the Tualatin Estate Vineyard. This is the vineyard that Bill Fuller first established in 1973. Uh, it was a lucky day when he called me on the phone and he told me he wanted to retire and he wanted to sell his business. And I said, well, Bill, I don't have the money to buy your business, but how about if we put our businesses together and I borrow the money so you can retire? And that's what he did. He took stock and he took cash that I, that I borrowed against the value of the expanded, expanded business. And, uh, and now 17 years after that, he came back to work in the cellar. He's 85 years old and he's still making wine at Willamette Valley Vineyards. He's a remarkable winemaker and one of the first pioneers and the only pioneer winemaker of Oregon still making wine. Uh, that was a great day when he called me and I really enjoy his friendship and his advice over these many years. Here you can see this vineyard is, it's a, almost a 200 acre vineyard in a total of all the plantings. Of course, there, some of this, I, I, I've had a lot of help from people to do, like Peter Michael, for example, of San Francisco. Uh, he was instrumental in helping me finance this top part. So I did a sale lease back to him. Uh, so I was able to uh, plant this, this top part of the vineyard. And, um, and then we also have another piece of this that's on a sale lease back. So it's not all owned by our shareholders, but quite a bit of it is. This is the Loesa Vineyard, named after Efren Loesa, who is our vineyard manager. And we did that as a tribute to him and his family. Think about how long he's been with us, 43 years. And the reason why I'm showing you this is this is located uh, actually in just uh, east of Gaston. It's a, a wonderful little Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir vineyard. And um, just to kind of tell you a funny story about that, uh, I told I, when I told Efren that I that my wife and I had found this property, uh, Jan, my wife and I had found this property, Jan had negotiated to purchase it. And um, I told Efren about it. And I said, you know, Efren, we really need you know, Pinot Gris. We need more Pinot Gris. And, and Efren, and I said, well, you know, we'd like to name the vineyard after you in honor of you and your family. And he looked at me and he said, now, well, he says, if, if, if we can plant some Pinot Noir, then that, that would be fine. So that's just how much he loves Pinot Noir, loves growing Pinot Noir. And so he made sure there was plenty of Pinot Noir planted at this vineyard site. The other reason why I wanted to show you this slide was I wanted to show you that catchment pond that you can see there. You see a white apron? Well, that white apron is about as, it's bigger than a football field. And that white apron, drains rainwater into a catchment pond. And so what we do is we gather up our water for drip irrigation we use during the summer. We gather it up in the winter and it rains on that white apron, dribbles into that catchment pond, and we accumulate enough water to, to drip our vines all summer without having to drill a well and take water out of the groundwater or put a pipe into the, into the stream, into the Tualatin River to take water out of the river to drip irrigate. Because that's during the summer is when the fish need that water. 
And so that's why we wanted to be fully sustainable in our approach to watering our vines. This is the Elton Vineyard in the Eola Hills. Uh, we leased that vineyard from Dick and Betty O'Brien, uh, but we now have negotiated a purchase agreement. Uh, so when uh, Betty passes, we'll be able to uh, purchase that um, under terms that have already been negotiated. Um, it's one of Oregon's top vineyards and they developed that over the years. Um, and then when uh, their parents passed or when uh, her mom passed, um, her brother uh, inherited another part of the property and then they helped me purchase this land in the foreground from uh, Betty's brother. And so we named the uh, vineyard Ingram after the family name, after their family name. And their vineyard, Elton, is named after her father's first name. So Elton Ingram is her dad. And so that's where the Ingram estate name comes from. And it's, we planted almost all Pinot Noir. So probably one of the largest plantings, contiguous plantings of Pinot Noir in the Willamette Valley. Extraordinary piece of ground. It faces east toward the morning sun in that deep volcanic jory soil. It has its back to the uh, Van Duzer winds that help cool the fruit in the late afternoon in the summer, retaining the acidity in the fruit and then drying the fruit out so it re reduces uh, any uh, danger of uh, disease in the fruit. Now here's a picture of Dick and Betty. Uh, Dick has passed away now. Betty still lives there at the vineyard and um, remarkable people. Betty was the uh, executive director of the San Am Girl Scouts here in Mid Valley and Dick was a middle school teacher. They so believed in the future of Oregon wine, they spent their summers, their weekends, their evenings, planting and caring for this vineyard. And just to give you an idea of how extraordinary they are, um, they decided that when we purchase this vineyard from their estate, that the, that the value of this vineyard is to be divided between Chemeketa Community College's wine program and Oregon State University's viticulture and extension program. So think about how remarkable the O'Briens are in committing their life's work to young people, to help young people grow in our industry. Now, another fun thing about this picture is you can see a white rock here in the middle of the vineyard. That's a glacial erratic. It's probably the largest white granite rock that has been found in Oregon from the great Missoula Lake flood that helped um, create the profile, uh, the extraordinary soil profile that, that, that is in the uh, Willamette Valley in our hillsides where we grow our Pinot Noir vines. And if you look really closely, you can see where the, the earth becomes lighter and lighter as you go up the hill. And that's because the sedimentary soil from the Missoula Lake flood that flooded, that came down through the Columbia, creating the Columbia River Gorge um, that was that sedimentary soil that lays over the top of that volcanic soil. And that's where those big chunks of ice came to rest and then melted away and left rocks from Canada in our vineyards, but also the soil. And some of our best Pinot Noir grows on the bathtub ring of the Missoula Lake flood. This is a little video of our Domain Willamette property. This is the Brno Estate Vineyard in the Dundee Hills. You can see the old winery just that's disappearing at the bottom of the screen. We're converting that into a wine shop. And you can see the new uh, road that goes up to the brand new Domain Willamette Winery. My wife, worked, Jan, worked for six years to imagine this, plan it, design it, permit it, and build it. Six years. And we just opened it to our owners on Labor Day weekend for a sneak peek while we were still finishing the construction. So this picture is actually a construction related picture. Um, that, that image right there is a replacement dwelling that was required to be uh, uh, on this property, uh, which we use as a residence and also the entertainment of wine distributors, wine writers, and for other things that will support the winery. Um, and then you can see these biodynamic gardens here in front of you a most remarkable water feature. And there's the uh, Domain Willamette Sparkling Winery and Cellar, where our sparkling wine goes through a secondary fermentation in a, in a cellar. There's a white granite, that's a white granite sculpture of one of the biodynamic ingredients that we put in our sprays 
Uh, so we're, you know, if you kind of think about what is a biodynamic farmer, there's Mount Hood from the from the vineyard. Um, it's we're really kind of like nat naturopathic farmers. We're we're um, we're very we, we use natural ingredients to care for the vines and the soil and in a very holistic way and also paying attention to even the influences of the light and gravity on the uh, on the vineyard and on on what we're growing. So that's the Domain Willamette property. Uh, our ambition is to make Domain Willamette uh, one of the, um, that brand right there, Domain Willamette, to make it one of the greatest sparkling wine brands in the world. Now, one of the secrets behind the, the North Willamette, and people are starting to learn this, and, and that is, is that Pinot Noir especially, is a, it's a thin-skinned, cool, uh, cool climate variety. It grows very well in the Willamette Valley. In fact, it's one of the best places in the world for it to grow. But the thing that is special about the North Willamette is that Pinot Noir develops aroma and flavor in the fruit at lower levels of maturity, at lower sugar levels. Now, when you pick Pinot Noir to make a still wine, a red Pinot Noir wine, you're picking at around 24 and a half bricks. Uh, which is a, the, a measure of, of, of sugar in the fruit. But when you pick to make sparkling wine, you're picking at a much lower level of maturity. You're picking at 18 and a half. And that is why you're going to see an amazing future with sparkling wine from the North Willamette. And you probably already know if you watch the cir industry circulars about the French uh, champagne producers that are now planting their flag in the Willamette Valley. This is, gives you an idea on this slide about where is Domain Willamette and our sparkling winery and the vineyard. Where is it in relationship to the Dundee Hills other wineries? This kind of gives you a sense of that. There's Highway 99. Domain Willamette is borders Highway 99 and goes up the hill. But this will give you an idea of where some of the other producers are located. We also own another piece of property. We're going to start planting. And you can see that arrow. It's just across the uh, McDougall Road from Stoller Family Estate. And a number of you might know where that's located. And that um, is where we're going to be planting uh, Pinot Noir uh, vines uh, very soon. And it will be, it is, we purchased that for an expansion site to be able to in increase our production capacity when it comes to that uh, in the future. And so we're, we're working on plans to do that now. This is a little better view of that 40 acres that's located right across the road, McDougall Road from, from Stover. This is a vineyard called the Lafayette property. This is right adjacent to the city of Lafayette, and this is an area where we're also going to be planting. It's, a, it's actually a site where one of our vineyard managers lives as well. And uh, the reason why I'm showing you these things is because you own them. And, um, and this property, just like the, the property in, in the Dundee, uh, in the Dayton area, I just showed you, you own. Um, in fact, there's not a nickel worth of bank debt in the Domain Willamette Winery. Here um, is the Jory Claim Vineyard. Now this is right across from, this is directly west from the estate in the Salem Hills. So this is actually part of the original um, homestead of the Jory family, of which the famous soil has been named after. And this gives you an idea of how our employees have used science to help them figure out where to plant and, um, and what to plant. Now, this is an image of our first outpost. We wanted to take the Oregon story on the road, and we built a Willamette Wine Works in Folsom, California. We have shareholders down there as well, and it's a place for them to enjoy. Uh, it's on the second floor above the uh, above a seafood uh, restaurant in the historic Folsom district. Here is our new uh, Willamette Valley Vineyards uh, taste room and restaurant located in Lake Oswego. It's been open since uh, May. And um, the only challenge we've had, we had a great opening and then we had difficulty staffing the back of the house. We had to restrict our hours. Now they're now they've improved the staffing, but I would tell you that Staffing in restaurants is, is really challenging um, right now. It's, it's never been more challenging, I, I don't think, ever. 
especially in the back of the house, especially in the kitchen. Um, here is an image of our Taste Human restaurant located uh, on uh, the Columbia River on the Vancouver waterfront. It's just above the Mary Hill um, Bistro and Tasting Room, Mary Hill Winery Tasting, uh, uh, Bistro and Tasting Room, and uh, right along a very active part of, the, uh, of that uh, waterfront. Now this is a uh, architect's rendering of the what that happy valley uh, taste room restaurant is going to look at, like and we think we're going to have be able to have our owners in there in early November for owner exclusive evenings so be looking forward to that it's really something it's gonna it's right it's really in a, an amazing location in happy valley so you drive through happy valley you're not gonna you're not gonna miss this now this is just a picture of Wall Street in historic uh, downtown Bend, uh, where we have negotiated for a location there, um, and we'll begin construction on that um, in January or so, whenever we can get our permits, and we hope to have it completed in, in mid next year. And that's of course one of the purposes for uh, the selling of this preferred stock, is to help us capitalize our company so we can grow in this manner. Now, this is just something that appeared recently on the Daily Meal. Uh, we were included as one of the 13 best wineries in the US. Uh, we've had a number of designations. When my wife did the remodel here at Willamette Valley Vineyards, I think it was in 2010, 2011, Sunset Magazine named uh, Willamette Valley Vineyards Tasting Room as, one, as the best experience in the nation. And so my wife is really very talented and um, um, and so it, it was expensive, actually, when she did that project. It's really hard doing remodels because it's very hard to predict um, what things are going to happen as you expand. But she expanded the cellar. She put in a wine library, uh, built an office for me, um, and a beautiful estate room and patios and two suites. We have two suites at the winery that you can stay in. Um, and it's really something. You've got to come see it. This is just an example of how you know that this stock, um, we sell it directly. Uh, and the reason why we sell it directly is because we get the capital when we sell the stock. When you buy stock on the NASDAQ, we don't get that capital. Only a seller of the stock gets that capital. And we need those, the capital funds to grow. So when we sell it directly, we, um, we, the company receives it. There's no fees related, so you get to avoid any transaction fees in purchasing the stock from us. And um, and of course, then we do pay a dividend. The dividend is 22 cents a share, but we really want people to use that dividend as a wine credit, uh, which they get 15% more value and they can use it in their wine club. They can use it in their purchases at the restaurants or in the wine that they ship to them. That they have shipped to themselves or their friends. The, um, but it's about, the return is about 4.19% uh, and the stock is selling for $5.25 a share. There's a minimum of 300 shares um, and a maximum of 2,300 shares. And that's because we don't want any one shareholder to get a large number of shares because we want more and more wine enthusiasts as owners. Because when you have all those wine enthusiasts, you know, they drink their wine, they tell their friends about their wine. And, and actually one third of our revenues, uh, direct sales revenues um, last year came from our preferred stockholders for almost four, I think over $4 million. So pretty significant uh, uh, contribution that they make to the company. And this is just the last slide that shows you uh, just an image of the, uh, of the uh, vineyard. Um, down at the bottom of the uh, Bernal block. That's the vines I first planted with the help of Susan Sokoblosser and Dan Duche and his brother. Um, the, there was a question that someone had about well, what's this redemption feature that's in this? And I got to tell you about that because it's kind of funny. Uh, when I first did this preferred offering, some of you may know my history because I did the very first uh, self underwritten public offering in the country to start Willamette Valley Vineyards back in 1980, to fund it back in 1989. We got, we got permission from the Securities and Exchange Commission in 1988, but that was after three years of trying to convince them to let me do it. We did the very first crowdfunding in America, the very first regulation stock offering. 
And before that time, uh, wine enthusiasts uh, could only invest in things like this if they were what they were called a qualified investor, which are people who made over $250,000 a year and had over 2 million in assets. That didn't include their homes in their value of those assets. And so that really essentially meant you know, $2 million of real estate holdings outside of their home or stock. And, and that's the way the law was back then. But because of our groundbreaking efforts in, in small scale funding of businesses, now there's a whole fabric of state and federal laws. And we were their poster child to show that it really could work. And it was important for people to be able to make investments in small companies that weren't wealthy people. And, and that's where we found a lot of our wine enthusiasts. And so they come from all walks of life, but it allows them to participate as owners in this, in this uh, business, in this industry. And I tell people, I said, well, you know, if you drink wine, you might as well own the winery because your own consumption will support your own investment. And, um, and that's kind of the, the strength behind Willamette Valley Vineyards in our history. Well, that stock offering I did back in 1988, that was completed in 1989, and I did several others, was common stock. Uh, that's shares that doesn't pay a dividend. Now, the, the shares that do pay a dividend is preferred, and that's what we're selling. Now, there's this redemption feature in this preferred. So when we started to do the preferred um, and plan for the preferred, our attorneys said, well, boy, if this plan doesn't work, you're going to have this expensive structure of this preferred stock obligation, and you may only have a small level of investment. And, um, and, and so you really need a, uh, an ability to back out of the preferred stock plan and a redemption feature. And, and I said, well, we have high confidence this will work. And they think, well, you just need to have the safety valve if it doesn't. So that's what that is. That's a, that was an old safety valve they put in there if the thing didn't work. If, in other words, if it raised only a little bit of money and then the show was over. Uh, as you know, it's been remarkably successful. Um, we've raised over $40 million in, in equity from wine enthusiasts, and it's fueled our growth, as you've seen. And, and, and so this redemption feature is still sitting in there. But in order for the redemption feature to, be, to actually be used, we would have to come up with over $40 million to buy all the shares back. Now, of course, that's ridiculous. First of all, we would really piss off all of our wine enthusiast owners who are behind the brand and buying the brand and supporting the brand. So we'd never do that. But the other thing is, is where would we come, where would we come up with $40 million? So it, it's really, um, a, it's, it's a nonsensical issue um, uh, for us. Let's see, what other questions do you have? Oh, one of the questions was, well, I noticed that the stock price is lower on the NASDAQ than it is in the, in the shares you're selling. And, and the, there are some people who bought the stock, you know, several years ago, who have traded that stock. And they traded that stock for more than they paid for it, likely, but, that, but, but still below the stock price that is being offered by the company. And so if you do want to buy shares that way, you certainly can, because that's, that's a, a traded, freely traded market. But what I'm, we're saying is that, that uh, you may not be able to buy all the shares you want. You'll probably pay a transaction fee that, you know, if you look at the transaction fee included in the shares you're buying, it might get close to the number we're offering. But the other thing is, is that here we'll be able to provide you with the benefits of ownership, because we'll know who you are we'll be able to make sure you get your discounts at all of our locations. We'll be able to make sure you get your special treatment at all of our locations, that you have access to wines that no one else has access to, that you have special events you can attend, um, and then you also have the opportunity to receive that wine credit, which is a, has a, even a greater value than the dividend itself. So those are a couple of reasons why um, you, um, you, we really ask you to buy directly from the company. Now we will send you, you receive, you should receive all the information about the company. I mean, this is a business. We're farmers. Um, this is farming. Not every year is a good year. Um, and we share all that with you. But you'll also learn when you look through our financial information, how strong we are, how much vineyard land we own, and, and how much equity 
we have in our company. The other thing I'm, I'm proud of too is over the many years that I've been leading this company, we have retained in earnings of over $25 million. Retained in earnings. And if you look at the company as a whole, uh, you can see that actually we're, we've got a lot more assets and value than what that trading price is. But we're not selling the business um, you know, to some big conglomerate. We are wine enthusiasts, we believe in Oregon, and we're just getting started. So I would, please join us. So now, Katie, do you have some questions for me that I can answer? Hey, Jim, um, I do have one from Marnie Halter asking um, how much of the real estate is owned by Willamette Valley Vineyards rather than leased? You know, that's a that's a long question and it's in the financial information and I think it might be on like page 16 or something of our of our uh, of our 10 Q or 10 K I'm sorry 10 K. But what we could do is we could make sure that we clip that out of that financial information that's available to her and she can get on it by just linking on it, but we can send that to her, but we own a number of vineyards. And um, we lease a number of vineyards and some of the vineyards we, we lease we have the right to purchase. And in the one particular one, we have already negotiated its purchase price. So we, we actually own a lot of land. Some of it's very, very valuable. You know, the, the land in the Dundee Hills is now, it costs like over $40,000 an acre just to buy land in the Dundee Hills to plant on. And when David Lett, who first planted Pinot Noir in the North Willamette Valley, when he came up in 1965 to plant those vines, he bought that acreage for $250 an acre. Pretty amazing. So Oregon has a, or the Willamette Valley still has a number of advantages. And one of them is that our relative costs of high quality vineyard land are lower than some of the other world-class regions of the world. And so is there anything that you'd like me to share with them, Katie, that I haven't touched on? Um, the only one I keep getting, and I think it's a great question, are really the differences between ownership and membership. Um, I think it's a great question. Um, yes, it is. Yeah, we do have a wine club and we do have something like 9,000 members of our wine club. We have something like 24,000 owners. So there is a crossover. There are some owners that are club members because they want to receive that constant information from the company as a, as a club member. But club membership doesn't have the level of discounts that the owners do and the and the club members don't have access to certain privileges and wines that the owners receive. But um, there are a number we have a number of club members and part of the reason why is we don't often sell stock. And so the only way you could get a benefit um, from the company is becoming a club member and so we only there's only three certain times that we actually sell preferred stock. And so, uh, and often we do have club members who become owners because they, the discount they receive is a club member is 20% and uh, from bottle one and the owner receives 25%. That's one of the most significant uh, differences. Are there others, Katie, that we could talk about? I think that's everything that um, I don't have an answer for. You know, one of the things I wanted to mention, Katie, we still have a number of people here on this and I wanted to make sure I mentioned that we have a Facebook page for owners. And I love reading those owner posts. And, but I also wanna tell you that um, I made a mistake. Um, well, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes over my life, but one mistake I made was I didn't really properly think through the, the annual shareholder meeting program that was offered uh, this last year here at the winery. And um, I should have given it more time and attention but what happened was they had just a, they had like a wine dinner and it had a, you know, a limited amount of, it, of people that could attend that wine dinner. And there was no large uh, activities that people could uh, participate in. And I can tell you that, that our Facebook pages, the Willamette Valley Vineyards and the owner's Facebook page lit up with, um, with some very sharp comments about how I needed to pay more attention to providing uh, the right experiences for our owners. And I'll, I went to the staff, I had a brand new uh, chief of operating, ch chief operating officer 
who helped me, Joe Padilla, um, and I'm really glad that he has joined the company because he's been a big help in, in especially things like this. And he, within hours, had a program put together um, where all of our owners could come and participate in a barbecue with Jan and I uh, at the winery and a historic group photo. We had something like over 850 owners come and we have the most incredible picture of all of our owners toasting uh, the uh, Oregon wine industry from our facility. You gotta see that picture. And then of course we have many, many pictures of our owners enjoying themselves um, at the winery. So it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, we, we still, we still learn and we're still learning and we're paying very close attention to make sure we provide our owners what they would like to receive um, as, um, as, you know, equity holders in, in our winery. Well, if that's it, it's been what, uh, just over 40 minutes. I really appreciate you all being on this zoom with me. I'm doing another one, um, I believe at 530 today. Is that right, Katie? That is correct. And uh, so, it, but it's really the same thing. I'll be answering essentially the same questions. And But I do want to make sure all of you know to make sure you get your subscription form in because the stock price goes up to $5.35 a share on November 1. And the sooner the better because we've got more things to build. Thank you all for being a part of this Zoom. I hope you'll join us as owners.